Alright, so, interim review, part two, part the second. Um, go ahead and tell me what the slope intercept form of both of these lines are, um, and then uh, I'll add a little bit onto it. So go ahead and pause me and work it out. Okay, hopefully you're back and hopefully you've got good answers. So remember, I want the slope intercept form of the line, so it's y equals blank x blank. Okay, so find the y intercept first. On this line, it looks like it's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So the y-intercept is negative 3. And I need to find another good point. Well, it looks like they're all good points because they all cross on the corner of a box or at an intersection. So I'm just going to simply use this one. I could have used that one. It doesn't matter. Um, they'll all be the same slope anyway. So this one goes up 1 over 1. So up 1 over 1 is 1 over 1. The actual mathematical part of this is y equals x minus 3. Okay, because the slope is just 1, so I can leave it as nothing in front of x. So be careful of that. Okay, good. Over here, uh, the y-intercept is actually going to be here where this arrow is crossing. And that's going to be at negative 5. So the y-intercept is negative 5. And so y equals blank x blank. And I need to find another good point. Well, there's a couple. That's a good point. I could have used that one too. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah, you can definitely see that. Okay. Uh, up 1, up 2 to the right 1. So 2 over 1. So this is going to be y equals 2x minus 5. Okay, let's add on to this for a second. <clears throat> let's go back to this line. So this was the equation of this line. Now, we can see a graph, so it makes it a little bit easier, but pretend like you didn't have a graph. Now the graph is on me, right? <laughs> okay, is the point 0, comma, negative 3 on this line? Okay, again, what you need to do is you need to plug in this value as x, because that's an x value, and this value is y, and that's a y value into here and see if it becomes a true statement. So for instance, if this is a y value is negative 3, negative 3 is going to go in for that, and 0 is going to go in for that x, and minus 3. Well, 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Okay, so this equals, which means it's a true statement, which means that point is on that line. Let's go back to the graph for a second. 0 comma negative 3. 1, 2, 3. Well, that point is clearly on that line. Okay, Let's do another one. Um, let's go with one that you Let's go with 5, 2. Well, see if that's on that line. Um, it definitely is on that line. You could see from the graph itself, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. So that is on the line, and we can plug it in to make sure. So 2 is a y value, and that equals 5 minus 3. Okay, so that is true. Now let's go with 1, and clearly you have a good idea where I'm going here. Uh, let's go 6, 4. Now, even before you realized I was going to do that point, you knew the next one wasn't going to be on the graph. And this one isn't. So you can't see it because it's not, the graph, the graph doesn't even go that far. But let's plug things in and see how it goes. 4 is a y value. 6 is an x value. Well, 6 minus 3 isn't 4. And because it isn't going to work, which means it's not true, this doesn't work. Okay? I could give you a few more for that one, but this is how we work those types of things out. Um, okay. Let's go with, uh, a little something different here. Um, you can be able to recite the slope and the y-intercept of those two graphs, or those two lines right there. Um, the first one, the slope is negative 2 over 5, the y-intercept is 2, and the second one, the slope is 1, and the y-intercept is also 1. I could make a table of values there, so just a note for you. So here, I'm back. Don't miss me too much. Let's take this line. If I gave you a table of values, right, so an xy table, um, you need to be able to give me some good points. So, for instance, if x is 0, y would be what? 1. What if x was 1? Then y would be 2. What if x was 2? Then y would be 3. What if x was 100? <laughs> So if x was 100, then y would be 101, okay? So just be able to identify how, to, how these two things relate because you can always plug stuff in. Substitution is going to be a big deal for you, not just for this interim and the next test, but for systems. And systems is the thing that it gives people nightmares, okay? So there, now we got that. Now let's go into one last thing, uh, scatter plots. So you know what a scatter plot is, right? A scatter plot is just a set of points on a graph. But there's two things that we need to understand from that. So number one, what are the associations from this graph? So this graph is positive because it's going uphill, but it's also linear. 
because not all the points, you, you don't connect all the points because that would be just ridiculous. But we have to create a line that is a best fit line. Okay, so the line of best fit is a big deal in math because it gives me an average of all these points together. We've talked about this in class and we've talked about this in previous videos. The next step, and this is going to be on your unit 8 test, is give me the equation of this line. Now, for the purposes of this video, you don't have to give me an exact, but let's pick from a couple. So let's say I gave you three lines. So let's say choice A is uh, y equals negative one half x plus seven. Let's say choice B is y equals four x plus three. And choice C is y equals three uh, x plus, no, three x minus four. Okay, of those three choices, there's some things that you can eliminate right away. For instance, you know this is a positive line, which means it has to have a positive slope, so it goes going uphill. We can immediately eliminate any slope that has a negative in front of it, because negative slope means what? Going downhill. So A clearly will not be the choice. <laughs> I just thought something really funny. Oh, that's so stupid. Okay. Um, I can also eliminate things that have a y-intercept that does not match this graph. So for instance, any y-intercept that's negative, because a y-intercept that's negative means it's below this axis, like down. Well, clearly the y-intercept is above the axis, so it would have to be a positive y-intercept. This one, why I changed it, is a negative y-intercept, so we can eliminate that. By default, the only one left over is b. Now, b actually matches okay, because you could give me a good case or an argument that that could be 3, and you could also give me an argument that the slope is 4. It's not, because 4 is a little bit steeper. That's probably a slope of 1 or 1 over 2, but that has to be the answer by default. So eliminate the things that you know, okay? Um, I'm going to go one more, but I'm not going to give you choices. I want you to give me something that would work. Okay, so tell me what the associations are, but then give me a good line of best fit. So if we still use, hopefully you pause me in your back, if we use y equals blank x blank, okay, you could make a case that the, well, first of all, the, the association is negative linear, right, because it's going downhill and it's a line. So the line of best fit has to have a negative slope, and it also has to have a negative y-intercept, because this is the y-axis, and the, the y-intercept is below here. So you have to give me two negatives here. I could make a case that this is negative 2, negative 3, even negative 1. I'm going to go negative 2 because that sounds about right. And the slope, I don't know, down 1 over 1. So we could just do a negative 1x. Too many x's. Okay, so that might be a good one. If you had negative 2, if you had negative 3, if you had negative 1 half, that's okay. Nothing, no, nothing specific. The only thing that's specific, the only thing that has to happen here is this is a negative slope because it's going downhill. And it's also a negative y-intercept. Okay? So check those, um, make sure you're aware. Interim is tomorrow, okay? Looking for good scores, see ya.